Okay, so we're going to work with acids first. Um, everything we do with acids tends to be a little more straightforward than with bases. So you want to make sure you're good on this section before you move on to the section on bases. Um, for a while, for the next few weeks, we're just going to be talking about strong acids and strong bases. The word strong, if I asked you what, what you thought it meant, guaranteed most of you would be wrong. Um, a strong acid doesn't mean it's like particularly harmful. Um, the word strong, and th this definition matters in terms of how we approach all the math. Um, the word strong, whether it's for an acid or a base, means that it is something that dissociates fully. So last week you, fi you finished up KSP. KSP was always looking at things that barely dissociated. Barely dissociated, so we used equilibrium arrows and ice charts. Something that fully dissociates, we don't have to use equilibrium arrows, we don't have to use ice charts, we go back to essentially using mole ratios. Um, so these are the six strong acids, like the six strong acids. Um, in class, I would normally tell you you have to memorize them. Uh, can't make you do that at home. But there's something that it's only six of them, and knowing that they're a strong acid is going to help you later on. Um, hopefully with enough practice, you'll just know that anyways. Um, but this is the, it's a finite list. It's not like these are the only ones I want you to know. It's this. So HCl, that's an L, not an I. HBr, HI, HNO3, HClO4, and H2SO4 are our six strong acids. They're strong, so they fully dissociate. Um, meaning, let's say I had HCl and I dissociated it, which we're always going to be working with acids in solution, so they will always break apart into ions. They'll always dissociate. Splits into H plus and Cl minus. Again, it's a single arrow because it's a strong acid. We're not doing anything not strong for quite a while. Um, HBr would also dissociate the same way. Hi would be the same. Um, for the polyatomics, it's also still just splitting into two pieces, H plus and NO3 minus. Or for perchloric, into H plus and ClO4 minus. Sulfuric, um, we're not going to dissociate it. We're not going to do any math with it. It's kind of, it's funky. It's like sort of acts as a strong acid and then also sort of doesn't. Um, so as long as you recognize it's a strong acid, that's, that's all you need to know. Um, might as well do hydroiodic. So the reason I'm showing you these dissociations, one, to drive home the point that it's strong, so we use a single arrow. Two, if you notice, these are all already balanced. H2SO4 wouldn't be, but again, it's kind of like everything with H2SO4, H2SO4 is a lie, so ignore it. Um, these are all balanced, and all of our coefficients are one. That makes our lives way easier until we get to strong bases, then if you don't conceptually understand what I'm about to tell you, then you're going to be kind of stuck. So, because all the coefficients are 1, that means if I had a, constant, a molarity, a concentration of one of these acids, so let's say I had 0.3 molar nitric acid, and I wanted you to find the H plus concentration. Why might I want the H plus concentration? Um, well, if I want the pH, you know that for pH, we would need to take the negative log of my H plus, okay? The formula says take the negative log of the H plus. HNO3 is not the same thing as H plus, so I could not just take this number and plug it in right away. But what I can do is do a mole ratio with my molarity. Remember, brackets mean molarity. So I have the, I have the molarity of the nitric acid. Uh, if I want the molarity of hydrogen, coefficient of what I want over coefficient of what I have. Want over given. Um, and you'll notice I end up with 0.3 molarity H+. plus. That's my H plus in brackets, so it can be plugged in. I could negative log the 0.3 and get 0.52 as my pH. Um, so... All of the strong acids that we do any work with are one-to-one -one ratios, meaning the concentration of the acid is going to be the same as the concentration of the H+. 
but conceptually it's really, really important that you know we're not just taking this number and plugging it in. We're taking this number, multiplying it by 1 over 1, because again, coefficient of what we want over coefficient of what we have. And yes, it's coming out as the same answer. So for strong acids, if I give you a molarity of the strong acid, if you just automatically know that that's equal to the same molarity for the H+, I'm okay with that. But I want you to do something to tell me, like, oh, it's a 1 to 1 ratio. It would be 1 over 1. Um, so you don't find yourself in trouble later. Um, okay, so on these try problems, essentially I'm going to ask you to use those same formulas you've been using, but make sure you're taking into account this ratio somewhere. So when I look through your classwork, I'm going to want to see that you show some understanding of the fact that the molarity of the acid and the molarity of the H plus aren't the same thing. They end up being the same number, but they're not the same thing. We have to actually do something. We have to multiply by one to get that value. Um, other things that will be helpful as you work your way through these tri problems. Remember that anything in brackets, like H plus in brackets, that is asking for a molarity. The molarity formula is moles over liters. So I could give you grams of one of the acids, ask you to then go from grams into moles. When you have moles of the acid and liters of the solution, you can find the molarity, and that would give you the concentration of the acid. So make sure you're paying attention to what do I have grams of? Okay, what does that get me moles of? Okay, what does that get me molarity of? Then do your one-to-one -one ratio. Um, try that, and let me know if you have trouble.